Civil rights are nothing the state grants its citizens. Civil rights and fundamental rights and the laws arising out of these are limitations we as citizens grant states to limit our freedom in certain ways. I think we should never forget that societies consist out of people making politics, NGOs, civil society, and that it is not us to decide how much freedom a society has, but it is out of society's interest to decide how much they agree in limitations to their freedoms. We live in an age when security is used by democratic governments as an excuse to extend the strong arm of the state, to encroach on the liberty, on the privacy, on the choice that all free citizens should enjoy. And we need people like Alex and people like Sophie Innitfeld and Sarah Ludford and our other colleagues to reverse the rising tide of authoritarian politics. It's a task that they take very seriously. Not only because they are good liberals, but because liberals and Democrats are civil libertarians to our core. Because it is minorities who need their rights most. As any of you will know, whether you are young or old, black or white, religious or secular, gay or straight, your rights and freedoms are core concerns for our party and we will fight for them as robustly in the next parliament as we have done in this. The moment we stop caring about freedom, freedom from the state as well as freedom provided by it, is the moment that liberty is lost. And as liberals, that is something we will not accept. I cannot say we will be secure, but we will not have our freedoms. We will be secure, but we will not have our human rights, human rights and security, at the same time, balanced. Is a defense against theocratic and totalitarian ideas and groups really necessary if we will monitor and listen to our own citizens? If we will prevent the freedom of movement and traveling? If we will deny legal protection of suspects and expose them to torture in all directions because of the defense of the Western civilization. Before we realize that they were imprisoned by mistake or because of false criminal complaint. Those who, in the name of the democracy, supposedly use such methods are actually not subject to the principles of democracy, but for them, is the only a disguise or an excuse, respectively, for their narrow political goals, which are far from the values of the liberal democracy. In particular, counterterrorism and migration policies have been developing at the European Union level without a full respect for human rights and civil liberties, and we have been calling upon legislative control to ensure such um, respect to be included in the legislation. Um, it's a policy area where um, the declarations are easier said than done. Uh, we see a whole array of policy instruments developing for foreign policy in the field of human rights, but when we enter into looking at our own um, record in the field of human rights, we realize how much it's difficult for European Union de de decision makers to actually include human rights and civil liberties and make sure that they are respected within their own policies. I could give a few examples, and starting with counterterrorism. We have witnessed over the past and since the 9-11 an array throughout member states of legislation and measures to combat terrorism that have been shaped and implemented in violation of human rights. The second also area of concern has been the drawing of lists of suspects of terrorist acts which are infringing upon civil liberties without adequate measures to obtain the withdrawal of the list or without judicial process to contest the fact that an individual be on this list. Ilga Europe's vision is of a world freed from any form of discrimination on the grounds of sexual orientation, gender identity or gender expression. A world where the human rights of all are respected and everyone can live in equality and freedom. And I thought here I would take the few minutes that were given to me 
to provide a short reflection of how we see this happening. Because freedom is not just about the up, uh, ability to do whatever you want, to have no rules. It is actually sometimes through the provision of conditions, laws, policies that will allow people to, pr to exercise all their rights and freedoms uh, adequately and entirely. In the last decade, Roma issues have been mostly discussed in the con context of social and economic rights. Countless reports and studies have been issued dissecting the nature and causes of the social exclusion that plague Roma communities. Looking back, I am conscious that during the, this ending mandate, many steps have been taken both at EU and national level to address the social and economic situation of Roma citizens. These are steps forward, and we should not diminish their, their importance. Yet the picture remains grim for the Roma living in the EU and beyond. Over the past two years, Roma communities have faced brutal violence in Italy, Hungary, and the Czech Republic, sometimes with tragic consequences. Interethnic tensions are rising as economic hardship is setting in, and populist politicians all too often use fear of the Roma for political gains. Um, you'll know, of course, of the Data Retention Directive, which was pushed through in 2005, and which treats all 500 million European citizens as potential criminals whose communications should be monitored and recorded. Um, you'll know of the, the principle of availability that the Council has pushed through, which says information in police databases across the European Union should be shared between police databases. You'll know of the agreement between the European Commission and the United States, which shares a range of information about European um, passengers flying to the US uh, in their passenger name records. And you'll know that the European Data Protection Supervisor has been proclaiming ever more loudly over the last couple of years that the privacy regime for people's internet use is just not, just not up to European standards yet and that the European Parliament really needs to step in and do something about that. My country, the Czech Republic, which, as you know, is currently presiding over the EU, has recently introduced a law which limits, which does limit, freedom of speech and freedom of press. The law limits those freedoms in a way which is, I think I have a full right to say, unprecedented. And as a journalist, I could easily go to jail in my country for just doing my job. I could be sentenced for up to five years in jail for a crime of publishing quite a broad range of information. We have written out a declaration there. If you support this, if you believe this is a good start to coordinate on a European-wide level, be free to sign it. And please also don't forget the fingerprints you see there. Everywhere you believe in Europe where there might be civil liberties endangered, just put the sticker on and take the action. I would be very, very happy if you now would help us and uh, follow us, in fact, outside, just where you can also, with a small raising of balloons, in fact, like these, and now the security will love me, um, actually have the possibility to go outside and to do this with around 150 to 200, just to mark the start of this. We want to use the 15th of April, if possible, to have every year a European Civil Liberties Day slowly evolving, slowly getting bigger, and making a movement to protect rights of people.